Hello and welcome to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is my first video on Zential 3.0 using a 64-bit edition. The initial installation of Zential. Zential 3.0 is based upon the Ubuntu 12.4 Server Edition LTS. Let's begin. I'm booting from a live CD and I'm now presented with a screen where it is asking me to choose a language. I'm going to choose English. On this menu, I'm going to go with the second option. The first option is more of an automated installation process. Pretty much does everything for you. With this option, the expert mode, it gives you the opportunity to choose the type of formatting, size, and basically how you want to set up your hard disk and partitions. I'll go with that option. And once again, I'm being asked to select the language. On most of these, I'm going to go with the defaults. Now on this installation, I had set up two network interfaces. I'm going to choose the first one, Ethernet 0. At this point, it doesn't really matter what interface you choose. It's just looking for an IP address so I can connect to the internet and download packages for the installation. There it goes. It received an IP address via DHCP. Now we have to apply a host name. And go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call mine server01 and continue. Username for your account. Um, I try to keep this unique. I try to keep away from using the same name that I would use on the domain. Like uh, if my domain name is Donald, I don't want to make a local account Donald. This local account will have an administrative rights. It will also have the ability to log into the Zential administrative dashboard. An example would be if I created a domain name of Donald and I also had a local administrative account on the server called Donald. Well, it only creates one home directory and they can't share the same space, so that's not going to work. Most businesses like to use the employee ID that I have discovered over the years as their login name, which is good because it's a unique identifier. You could use the first name, last name. But for this particular part right, right now, I'm just going to call it a D user, just to keep it simple, and apply a password, and repeat the password. It's looking for a time server. I'm just going to take the default. That's fine. This is the the expert mode we had talked about a minute or two ago. And I'm going to choose manual. And I'm going to choose the ATI VirtualBox hard disk. I am using VirtualBox for this tutorial. It's a wonderful product. And create a new empty partition table on this device, yes. If you're using a normal hard drive, you might not see this prompt. And we're going to set up two partitions first partition being the primary partition, the second partition being the swap, SWAP. The swap partition assists the memory utilizing hard drive space. It's similar to Windows page filing. My rule of thumb on this, I take approximately the size of my memory and times it by two. Some people like to go two and a half times the size of their memory. Some people like to go more than that. I'm sure if you uh, run a search on the internet, you'll come up with lots of different ways of doing it. I have approximately 5 gig of memory for this virtualization, so that'll give me a 10 gig swap. So, I'll set aside 10 gig and continue 
primary beginning. Pretty much taking the default here, use it. Uh, EXD4 journaling file system and once again and now I'm done. Take the remaining space, create a new partition, continue to logical once again EXD4 journaling file system but I'm going to use it as a swap area this time and done setting up the partition. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Yes, we will commit changes. Write the changes to disk. Now, using the expert mode, there are a lot of other features. I mean, that was a very basic, simple setup. You can choose RAID configurations. You can set up your volumes in many different ways. It really comes down to your business needs. This is going to take a few minutes to install, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back at the first. Uh, prompt we get so I'll be right back all right I'm back now if I'm running a proxy server giving this installation the ability to reach out to the internet and download all the necessary packages I believe it's well over 400 packages now if you're not running a proxy server you can just click on continue And this is going to take, once again, a few more minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back at the next uh, screen dialog prompt. Okay, I'm back. That was something, huh? 425 packages needed to be, uh, at least on my installation, downloaded and installed. That's quite a, quite a few packages. Well, now we're being asked to uh, install the Grub bootloader on a hard disk. And I'm going to take the default, yes. Finishing the installation, this should only take a few more seconds. Is the system clock set to UTC? Once again, I'm going to take the default. Finish the installation. Installation complete. Next, we click continue. That will reboot the installation and proceed to install core essential packages. And it should auto log into the desktop when it is complete. So thank you for taking time and watching this tutorial, and hopefully you'll watch my next tutorial. That'll be my second tutorial on initial configuration of Zenchel 3.0. Thank you for visiting the Jonas.net, and have a nice day.